Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes? Um, before I start, just show of hands, how many people here are Kerbal Space Program fans? There's a whole part at the beginning of this where I explain what Kerbal Space Program is. I'm not sure it's necessary, but maybe one person hasn't heard of it, so we're going to do that part anyway. How many people have landed on the Mun? Are you stretching the definition of land? Good afternoon. Uh, thank you to Florian for inviting us to join you here in such an amazing location. Um, my name is Nate Simpson. I'm the creative director of Kerbal Space Program 2. Um, I've got some exciting news to share today, uh, but since maybe not everybody here is a Kerbal fan yet, um, I'd like to start with a little background. The first version of Kerbal Space Program was released in 2011. It was created by a software engineer named Felipe Falange. KSP was, in my opinion, the best game of all time. I think a lot of people here would agree. A lot of nodding out there. Uh, working in Mexico City with his studio squad, I've already messed up the clickers, here we go. There's going to be a lot of this today. Uh, all right, advancing. Working in Mexico City with his studio squad, Felipe created a new genre, the space engineering sandbox game. In Kerbal Space Program, you build space vehicles out of modular parts in a vehicle assembly building. And then you fly them in an accurately simulated star system of 17 celestial bodies. Your vehicles are crewed by these fearless but lovable little beings called Kerbals. The magic of the game, the thing that has kept me playing for the last decade, is its fly and then crash and then redesign and then fly and then crash game loop. The game can be hard because rocketry is hard. But you stick with it. Uh, at least a little bit, because failure in this game can be pretty funny. And for those with the patience to keep learning from those setbacks, the payoff can be huge. Ask any KSP player about their first MUN landing, and they'll talk about it like they summited Mount Everest. Even after Felipe moved on to other projects, the original Kerbal Space Program has continued to thrive 12 years after its release. That longevity owes a lot to one of the most vibrant modding communities ever assembled. Until you've tried out some of these mods, you've barely scratched the surface of the KSP experience. Felipe's creation has had a huge cultural impact. This is one of two XKCD comics about Kerbal. One of the best parts of this job is that we get to hear lots of stories about kids falling in love with space exploration through Kerbal. I met a lot of those kids today. It's very, very exciting. And we are very proud of the role KSP has played in inspiring students to pursue careers in aerospace engineering. When we visit space agencies from JPL to ESA, we're always surprised how many real rocket scientists spend their free time stranding little green people in orbit. Life imitating art there in the lower left corner, that's a little green person actually in orbit. In 2019, Private Division announced the development of Kerbal Space Program 2. The team had many new faces in it, like mine, as well as a number of veteran developers from the original KSP team. Here's the promise we made for KSP2. As we highlighted in a series of trailers and developer videos, the sequel to Kerbal Space Program expands on the promise of the original by enabling you to build an interstellar civilization using future space technologies. You'll be able to explore new star systems, collect exotic resources, and use them to build colonies both on the ground and in space. And you'll be able to do this with your friends in multiplayer mode. And because we're excited to introduce Kerbal to a whole new generation, we've overhauled the tutorials and user interface as well. It's a pretty ambitious vision. In February of this year, we finally announced the game's release in early access. At release, the game contained a small subset of the promised features. In their stead, we posted an early access roadmap that showed the order in which future features were expected to arrive. I suspect the trouble is already evident here, uh, but I'd like to first talk about what was in the game on day one. First, we delivered an updated Kerbolar system that players could explore in sandbox mode. 
Many new features were present, including player configurable procedural wings and custom part coloring. A new tutorial experience taught novice players the fundamentals of space travel through a series of interactive training scenarios. A few people came up to me today and said that they learned the entire game through these tutorials. I was very happy to hear that they work. A new vehicle assembly interface, streamlined vehicle construction, including allowing the creation of multiple sub-assemblies in a single workspace. And of course, we updated the game's graphics to use physically-based rendering in an all-new terrain system. Since release, we've seen a lot of ambitious and beautiful creations from the community. Some of them focus on building vehicles capable of exploring the farthest corners of the Kerbola system. Others in the community have been getting real weird with it. Always nice to know there are other Thunderbirds fans out there. Um, if you want to witness the avalanche of creativity taking place in KSP2 today, please check out our Discord server. Uh, there's so much more where this came from. But there were also problems on day one. The core game loop was incomplete with re-entry heating completely omitted. The game had significant, sometimes game-breaking bugs. Sometimes the issues were pretty obvious, like Kerbal Space Program or Kerbal Space Center following you, your rocket to space. Uh, you know, other issues, while no less profound, were more challenging to identify. Sometimes vehicles would fall apart at random. Orbits were unstable. These and many other bugs were reported by players in the first days after release. And while we have fixed many of those bugs via updates over the course of this year, some frustrations have persisted. For example, the tendency of large vehicles to wobble around as if made out of rubber. Not great. Shadow Zone, that one's for you. Some people ask me why we released the game in early access with so many features missing. We thought the game was at a place where long-term quality would be improved by getting into as many hands as possible, as soon as possible. For those who opted to join us in the early days, we'd offer a front row seat to participate in the game's development and help shape what it would become. But I think we did make a couple of miscalculations. <laughs> First, we overestimated the community's appetite for an in-progress sandbox experience, especially after we talked so much about future features. And second, we underestimated the amount of foundational work that still had to be done before we could start delivering those future features. That gap between future promises and current reality has strained community trust. Until now, our main tool for restoring that trust has been to release periodic updates that contain both foundational work and improvements to gameplay. These are guided by player bug, report, player bug reports, by and large. Uh, another one of these updates, the .15 update, is coming this week. Uh, we've upgraded to Unity 2022, and made significant performance upgrades, visual improvements, and bug fixes. You can find the detailed patch notes for that update on our forums. And that's the end of the presentation. <laughs> no? Should I keep going? <laughs> Early access has also given us detailed awareness of the state of a very large, very complicated game. The fans' willingness to talk to us when they find issues has been the single most important contributor to the game's ongoing improvement. I want to give a special shout out to Ant, some of you may recognize that name. He's one of our most prolific bug reporters. He was so good that we just ended up hiring him. Uh, he starts Monday. Welcome aboard, Ant. Now, while part of our team has been working on those public updates, another group has been quietly working towards some additional goals for the end of this year. These are, first, to make sure that every phase of flight, including re-entry, adds to the space flight challenge. Second, to evolve KSP2 from a fun sandbox toy into a game that provides hours of compelling gameplay. And finally, to get the game to a level of quality where KSP2 is the easy first choice for a player who's never played Kerbal before. I'm happy to announce today that we have achieved these goals. This December, we're releasing our first major roadmap update, which we're calling For Science. <laughs> the exclamation point is officially part of the title. 
you have to yell it whenever you say it. So brace yourself. Here is a peek at what you'll see in that update. Is this a fail? Oh, yeah. it's a fail. It's a fail. Yeah. The For Science update introduces a new game mode called Exploration Mode. In an Exploration Mode campaign, the player collects and transmits science from unique research locations across the Kerbolar system. They redeem that science back home to unlock new part technology. Why is it called Exploration Mode and not Science Mode like it was in KSP1? Because in future updates, this mode will allow resource collection and utilization, as well as the establishment of automated resource delivery routes. We want you to be able to continue the campaigns you start this December through all the future colony, interstellar, and resource gathering updates. To help with the collection of science, we've introduced a series of all new science collection parts. These parts aren't tiny, fiddly instruments. They're physically consequential, so you'll have to take their shape and mass into account when building your vehicles. An all-new science collection and transmission interface makes it easier for players to know when there's an opportunity to take measurements or collect a sample. On the Vessel Actions panel at the upper left, you can see an indicator of your current research location, making it easy to tell whether you're in a new place of interest. And we've connected all your science instrumentation to a research action so that collecting most science is a one-button process. Oh, that's cool. oh, and the research that's inventory nice. gives you a detailed view of all the science you've collected during a flight, giving you clear information about what you've learned and what conditions have to be met to claim your science rewards. There are many other quality of life improvements here. Uh, you don't have to get out of a pod to do crew observations. There's unlimited sample storage capacity. You're going to be doing a lot of science collection in the For Science update, so we work very hard to make it a smooth process. Once science has been brought back to the R&D Center, it can be used to unlock new categories on the tech tree, letting you make more advanced vehicles. You can scout future nodes and preview their contents to plan your ascent through dozens of part families. If you're looking for some new challenges, you can now visit Mission Control. Here, Dr. Kerry Kerman will send you on a series of increasingly challenging quests. The secondary missions will provide interesting new engineering goals, 
Sometimes they'll ask you to attempt an entirely new kind of vehicle or encourage you to fly to a location you've never visited before. And meanwhile, the primary missions will lead you all the way from basic rocketry through the investigation of an interplanetary mystery. And when your missions are complete, you'll be rewarded with extra science as well as a little narrative excitement. Auto-generated Kerbals now come in many new varieties with all kinds of hairstyles, makeup, facial hair, and other features. So basically what that means is once you've stranded Jeb and Val and all the other classic Kerbals, it'll be these auto-generated folks who crew your rescue missions. Adding to the thrill of exploration, there are now several dozen new hidden points of interest across the Kerbola system, what we call discoverables that yield additional science if you can find them. And sadly, your days of stress-free atmospheric reentry are coming to an end. Things now heat up very quickly during atmospheric descent, so you'll need to take those heat shields seriously from here on out. Lots of other quality of life improvements have been made. Here you can see our new Delta V tools that give you a better idea of how each stage of your vehicle will perform in its phase of flight. Choose a celestial body, select an altitude, and even switch between vacuum and atmosphere, and you'll get a stage-by-stage -stage performance breakdown. And in flight, expanded staging information also provides real-time updated thrust-to-weight ratio and remaining burn time in addition to delta V. You can see that at the right side. And of course, the For Science update addresses the wobbly rocket issue with a new enhanced joint system that drastically reduces vehicle flexing by adding supplementary joints in a similar way to KSP-1's auto strut. No struts at all in the center core of this monster, and it stays straight all the way to orbit. <laughs> yeah, that one deserves a clap, right? <laughs> Just to really illustrate the point, because we know this is important, uh, this is a nightmare rocket designed to bend. If you look very closely, you can tell the difference in this comparison between today's joints and the four science updates. Still has rigid body physics, but it is no longer a bendy mess. No more noodle rockets. The joint upgrade has improved gameplay all over the place. Uh, control surface oscillation is way down. Aircraft fly much more stably with SAS turned on, uh, and it's much easier to build very large stuff. In short, more rigid vehicles are happier vehicles. There are also major performance improvements in the Force Science update, pursued with the goal of making KSP2 playable on a wider variety of PCs. For example, the previous Kerbal Transform system, which simulates the motion state of all objects in the game, has been replaced with a new Sim Transform system that dramatically improves performance by unlocking CPU parallelization across wow. all cores. Finally. It's been little years. The terrain system has also taken a big leap forward in performance. By optimizing the way we sample biome data through mesh bucketing, we improve the terrain processing speed on our test machine, get this, from 8 milliseconds to 1.5 milliseconds, a 5x speed improvement for environment rendering. We still have a lot of opportunities to improve performance, but we've made some big strides. And finally, I'd like to announce that we've done a major atmosphere overhaul. Many of these changes will be visible in this week's .15 update. You probably noticed the atmosphere is looking particularly nice in the footage we've shown. These new improvements were made by the newest member of our graphics team, Gassen Lamar, AKA Black Rack. No you may know him as the creator of a little known KSP mod called Scatterer. We are very happy to have Gassen on our team, and as you can see here, he's already working his magic on the game. And while you're enjoying the Force Science update, we'll be well underway on our next roadmap update, which brings colonies to the game. A few updated colony parts in progress here, just to show we're working on it. We are very proud to finally be able to show you all that we've been working on for the past few months. And I, I really need to say here that our team has just been so passionate and creative and supportive of each other over this year. I hope you can feel some of that love when you play the game. But yeah, this December, you'll finally have an answer to the question, what was the Intercept team doing all year? <laughs> <laughs> Details about the Force Science update have been posted on our forums, so head over there if you want to learn more about what's coming in December. 
We appreciate our community hanging in there with us through the first year of early access, and we're looking forward to all the new adventures coming in 2024. From all of us at Intercept Games, thank you very much for your support, and thank you to Coriolis for sending our logo to orbit for this screenshot. Thank you. Do I stand? <laughs> this is the awkward part. Oh, someone's coming. <laughs> <laughs>